Hey, Bruce Taylor, your boomer consumer. Thanks so much for watching. I think this is going to be a fun one. This is Fossey Audio's new ZA3 amplifier. And why is this so popular right now? Well, I'll tell you, there's basically three words. Well, I guess it technically be four. <laughs> Scalability, the sound quality, and the price. And you put all that together, you get the ZA3, and that's why it is so, so popular right now. Now, as a disclaimer, I'd like to uh, thank Fossey for sending this to me for review. However, all opinions of my own, no one's reviewed the video prior to posting. I do have an affiliate link on Amazon to this unit. If you're interested, I make a little bit of change. It kind of helps keep the channel going. It doesn't cost you any more. So let me cut to the chase. I think this is going to be my new reference Class D amplifier going forward. I think uh, it's for anybody that's looking for a small but powerful, customizable desktop size amp. You know, I think uh, I think Fosse really knocked it out of the park. This is only a hundred and fifty dollars. Right? I think it is perfect for a smaller room. You know, if you get one of these, definitely in a small room, or a larger one if you buy two of these. And you run them as mono blocks. We're going to talk about that a little bit later in the video. Now, for you spec heads out there, <laughs> uh, you know I love specs as much as the next person, but I think you can just get so so hung up on them. You might end up throwing the baby out with the bathwater if you just go by specs only. But for you spec heads, it uses the Texas Instruments TPA thirty two fifty five, which is you know, a very high quality Class D uh, chipset. And it's used in a whole lot of these. You know, the real thing is the op amps that actually will gener ultimately determine how an amp should sound. You know, in theory, an amp should not have its own sound. It should be a straight wire with gain. All amps should sound like, but they don't. Uh, <laughs> they just don't. So according to Fossey, they're using audiophile grade capacitors and they're using audiophile grade components, resistors, etc. in the build of this, right? They give you inputs, you get RCA input, you get uh, XLR, TRS input, uh, XLR slash. Okay, <laughs> you get the XLR, which is, they say, a balanced input. It also has TRS in there. I'll show you here in a second. You'll see what I'm talking about. You can change the output from either mono mode or stereo mode with the flip of a switch. I like that. I like that nice mechanical switch. Signal noise ratio is 106 dB. Total harmonic distortion at 0.006%. Cyanide. 80, 9 dB, frequency response of 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, plus or minus 0.1 dB. Oh, let's talk about power output for just a bit. My review unit came with the 48 volt 5 amp power supply, right? And that is rates uh, stereo at 180 watts per channel into 4 ohms or 235 watts into 4 ohms. Um, that's if you're running it as apparently as a mono block. In the 8 ohms, however, by itself with the with this power supply, it's about 95 watts per channel into stereo. You also get a subwoofer output on there, but there's not any bass management that I could tell on that. But you do get a subwoofer out. You get five swappable op amps if you're into that kind of thing. I kind of think of that as tube rolling in a solid state version, maybe, uh, you know, I don't know. I'm, I've never swapped out bands, I couldn't tell you. Let's talk about the build quality of the ZA3. First, it's an all aluminum alloy construction, right? So it's all metal, very nicely done. Let's take a look here. The whole body is kind of a heat sink, <laughs> the way they designed this. Let's see if we can get this into focus. But this is kind of a, this design here is, acts as a filter. Uh, more or less, but the whole thing dissipates heat. They did a great, great job on that. You know, I ran this pretty loud. It got warm, but it never got all that hot. So, 
That's kind of cool. Size-wise, it measures about 6.1 inches in width, 7 and a quarter inches in depth, and just maybe not even 2 inches. Well, I guess from the bottom to the top, yeah, maybe about 2 inches. So, you see it's just not going to take up a whole lot of room. Let's take a look at the front controls on here and see if we can get this into focus. On the front, you have your source, whether you're going to use XLR, RCA, and then you have whether you want to use in stereo or mono mode. And then your volume control, which you just press and hold, and it'll turn it off and on. Of course, on the side, you see that you got these little holes on here that's again acts as a natural uh, filter for the ZA3. On the back, you have your 12 volt trigger, that's your power input, you've got your speaker inputs. Uh, come on, back into focus. There you go. Your subwoofer output, your RCA uh, output or inputs, and then, of course, your balanced XLR with uh, TRS inputs as well. And that's what's on the back. Now, as far as gear I use to test the ZA3, for the audio source, I use the NAD C538, it's a CD player. Working as a transport because it's connected to the Golden Wave, I think it's the Hi-Fi Man Golden Wave, Serenade, R2R, DAC, and then out of the DAC into here, into the ZA3. For speakers, I just stuck with the KEF Q150s, which I think is a excellent speaker, especially in the, in the near field when I tend to listen and, and test music and devices. Mostly, let's talk about some of the music that I used to audition the ZA3. And the first CD that I listened to was Neil Young's Harvest Moon. You're talking about just a nice, chill album. It's very relaxing, very uh, melodic, I guess, is the word. If there's a different word, please let me know. But just a very soothing, soulful type of album. And the track, You and Me. The strumming of the acoustic guitar, the ZA3, just sounded like, well, very accurate. Uh, Neil's voice was, you know, it just made the amps mid-range shine. You know, because that's where most of the music lives, is in the, in the mid-range anyway. And maybe it's a bit north of neutral, the, amp, the, amp, the ZA3 and the mid-range. But it's never similar, it's never tiring, it doesn't get old just maybe a bit on the warm side. Now the track Harvest Moon, it's just, what a beautiful melody. Very easy listening. It's a good way to test, I think, for listening fatigue, is to listen to that track. Put that track on, you know, loop, repeat, and listen over and over again and see how, do you feel fatigued with it? I, I just don't think so. I think the ZA3 does a remarkable job. And the treble, was crisp. It was never tiring on this. What can I say? Um, one of my favorite rock and roll bands from the past was Nazareth and the Hair of the Dog. Uh, it's a, this is a great rock and roll album. And I tell you what, um, you know what? It showed uh, the, the, the Titan track, for example, is really strong, right? It's a very strong, very powerful track. Maybe, again, the mids might be a bit forward. The highs are really, really brilliant. And what I call Pratt, and you've other audio files mentioned, pace, rhythm, and timing. The thing, get your toes tapping, is definitely strong in that track. Now, another track, this was their, a big hit. Lovers. <laughs> it, it was, uh, I had a buddy who went through a bad breakup, and he put that song on repeat, Love Hurts. And so we just took the, I think it was, you know, CD, thing, and we just took it and we just, or, yeah, we took the album that was, he had on record. And yeah, we took it and we hid it from it because we got sick of hearing Love Hurts. But, okay, different story. Um, the sound stage and imaging, because that's really, really important in the amplifier. How spacious an area is that amplifier? Is it, is it kind of confined? Is it, and... Yeah, I, it was there with this amplifier. The details in the vocals, the drums, the handling of the drums, especially in the mid bass, all very, very good. And next was Nora Jones. This is her 
latest release. It just came out this month in March. Number one on the jazz list, which is pretty amazing because I think she's more of a pop type of singer. Yeah, female jazz vocalist, pop. I think maybe she crosses over a little bit. Some people call this kind of a funky garage music sound. But I can tell you this much. Um, the track Staring at the Wall is an excellent pop song. It's punchy. It brings out the dynamics of the ZA3. It's, even though I played it very loud, the ZA3 never faltered on there, never never seemed to run out of power, is what I'm trying to say. And then the track, Queen of the Sea, I think that just brings out the very best of the ZA3. It really does. Oh, <laughs> there we go. I think that track, especially, I'm big in this soundstage and imaging, which was nice and wide. This give you uh, gives you very spacious sound. Okay, so let's talk about some of the pros and cons of the ZA3. Should you buy it? Well, I'll tell you what I like and dislike about the ZA3. First off, I really like the design. I like the way they handle, you know, the heat dissipation in here, how the whole thing is kind of a heat sink, and what they did for the looks, I think it looks fantastic. Just the overall build quality, nice metal design, I think is really excellent. It feels like a solid, well-made piece of gear. And of course, the high quality electrical components that uh, Fosse Audio put in it. Great. Especially, if you remember, this is only $150. I like the switches up. I like the nice mechanical switches. I like the fact that you can scale this up and have a two, it's two of these as mono blocks. You want you're 300 bucks. It's 300 bucks all in on that. It's crazy good. The sound quality is crazy good with this thing. Okay, what did I like? Well, I'm going to try to demonstrate this on camera. I don't know. You know, the, the autofocus, you know, they've got the bass tracking set up on the camera. So it, let's see if we can. Okay, this switch right here, you're off and on in volume control. There's actually a little bit of up and down movement on the switch. There's no detent, no clicking. Can't feel any detents on it. Kind of weak. I think the power's just a just kind of a little bit of a loose looseness to this volume control. And it could just be the unit I've got. I don't know. But yeah, I can feel a little bit of up and up and down. <laughs> and you you shouldn't be able to turn it, pushing it out, but you shouldn't really be able to make it go up and down. But it mine does, but just a little bit. So look, this is in my opinion. The king of the mini a Class D desktop amplifiers. Bottom line is, just get one of these. You're going to be happy with it. You can grow with it. You can actually have a nice sounding hi-fi system for just a few hundred bucks with the Fosse Audio ZA3. That's it. That is my review. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.